Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. This time we're going to be creating our algorithm. We're actually just going to create a diagram of a very popular algorithm that's called the bubble sort that is used for sorting a list of numbers. We're not going to actually program it because for that we need some knowledge that is explained in later sections of this course. However, we will create a diagram with this program that I've got here. So let's say we have a list of numbers that we want to sort. How would we go about sorting a list of numbers? Let's say, for example, we have 1, 3, 5, and 6. Well, 3, 1, 7, and 10, where only 1 should be before 3. So it should be 1, 3, 7, 10, and we have it not in order. So we have something like uh, 5, 1, oops, sorry about that, 5, 1, 7, 10. And we want 1, 5, 7, 10. So we're going to start at the beginning of the list. The beginning of the list is index number 0 because in programming we start counting from 0. We'll study this in section 7 in more detail. So we start at the first number which is index 0 and then 1 would be index 1, index 2, and index 3. So we start at index 0 and then we're going to check Is the next number in the list smaller than the current number? So if the next number is smaller than the current number, we want to put this number in place of the 5, and the 5 in place of the 1, so we want to swap them around essentially. So if yes, we're going to swap two numbers around. Okay, so this way we have now these two numbers in order. Now we only have to check for the rest. So, the thing we have to check first is if we already are at the end of the list. So, we have to check if the index is 3. Because if it is, then we can't keep going. We just have to start again. So, we check if we're at the end of the list. Like so. And then if we are... If we are, it gets a bit more complicated. So let's do if we are not first. So we're not at the end of the list, and therefore we simply keep going. This is the simple part. Uh, there. Okay, so we swap the two numbers around, and then if we are not at the end of the list, we increase the index by 1, effectively moving into the next number. And we simply check again if the next number is smaller than the current number. And then we swap them around if there are, and then we keep going like that. Until we are at the end of the list. If we are at the end of the list, we want to do one of two things. Let's, let's see what we want to do. Did we swap any two numbers? in this run through the loop. What this question is asking is, from starting at index 0 until we got to the end of the list, have we swapped any two numbers? If we have, then we are not sure if we've already finished sorting the list. Let me give you another example of a list. Here, we would put 3 in front of 5, 
So we'd end up in the first run through with 3 and 5 swapped over. Then we would swap over the 1 and the 5 the next time we went through it. And then the 5 and the 10 are in the correct position. We've gone to the end of the list. So we are here. Did we swap any two numbers in this run through the loop? Yes, we did. And this means that we have to come here and start again at index 0. So that we start again here and then we finally swap the 1 on the 3. If we have this list, we run through it one by one and we don't swap any two numbers, we know the list is sorted. So this is what happens when the list is sorted. So if we don't swap any two numbers, we know the list is sorted. If we swap any two numbers, we're not sure if the list is not sorted. So we're only going to finish sorting the list once we haven't swapped any two numbers in the whole run through the loop. This means that potentially we have one run through the loop too many, but that's okay because it makes sure that this means we have the list sorted. So this is what our algorithm would look like. We start at the beginning, we check if the next number is smaller than the current number, and we swap them around if they are. If we are at the end of the list, then we check if we swapped any two numbers in this run through the loop. If we have, we start again. And if we haven't, this means the list is already sorted because we didn't have to swap any two numbers, and so we finish. If we're not at the end of the list at any given point when we get to the end of this run, we simply increase the index by one and try again. And we do that until we get to the end of the list. So this is a very popular algorithm called the bubble sort that is not really recommended to use unless you have a really small list of numbers because it's not very efficient. Um, however, you may try to implement this later on um, with your own lists and we'll see how we can do that uh, in, in the later section when we study actually the lists of numbers because we, we still don't know how to create a list of numbers but we will in section 7. So hopefully this wasn't too complicated. I'm sure that um, with this diagram I'm sure it helps you understand what happens. Um, so yeah, let's keep going, and in the next section it's going to start getting a bit more interesting, and finally in section 7 we'll actually learn how to do stuff like this with list numbers. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video.